Hey guys, we're gonna be doing a bit of starter overview and um, some testing procedures and just uh, what terminals are what for those guys out there that are watching that um, are curious and don't know. It's good to learn. Um, so I've just basically got battery set up to a starter on the bench and uh, I guess I'll go over terminals that you would find on a starter to begin with. Um, basically, the majority of starters out there, you're going to have two uh, terminals, but there's really three parts to this circuit. Um, there's the main power feed that, uh, that feeds current to the starter motor itself that actually spins over to start the engine turn the engine over and then there is another terminal which would be a smaller wire and that is your signal wire and the signal wires job is to energize a solenoid the solenoid acts as a switch when that switch is closed that then allows current to flow through the larger terminal so it's using a small amount of current to control a large amount of current just like a relay um, the third piece of the puzzle that I was talking about um, is the ground. So these starters uh, ground through the body of the starter, which then go through the engine block or transmission, whichever it's bolted to, and usually go through uh, some sort of a ground harness. There'll be a, a cable that gets bolted to the block and then back to chassis ground, which returns back to battery negative or battery ground. So I just have um, an amp clamp actually set up right now with the oscilloscope and I have it set to one millivolt equals one amp. And this is actually the starter that was out of the, uh, the Honda CRV that I made a video about not too long ago and it was sort of intermittently cranking um, it was really on its way out I went to go start it and it was clicking and um, I didn't think it was going to turn over but after trying it a bunch of times Eventually, it did start to turn over, so I got the vehicle running luckily and was able to drive it into the shop where I was able to confirm that the um, starter was actually beginning to fail. It was on its way out. So, as you can see, just with the battery, we've got, um, as far as like testing purposes go, I just sort of rigged it up just so it's just like it is in a vehicle. You would have uh, battery positive. Um, fuse of course in a vehicle going right to this uh, starter terminal and then um, battery ground which would then go to the starter body um, now as far as the signal wire and how I'm going to control the starter to turn it on and off I actually just have my power probe hooked up so you can see negative terminal there, positive terminal there, and now I can control power or ground, and we would be feeding power to this um, signal terminal. So by feeding it power, I can turn that starter on. And you can hear it, it uh, does not sound healthy whatsoever. It's not having fun. So, anyhow, you can see here on the oscilloscope just what sort of amperage we actually are drawing, which is actually pretty nice to look at. Um, so, there's our zero volt line. Now, that amp clamp basically measures voltage and does a conversion. So we've got 100 millivolt scale for each division. You can see those squares in the background, those divisions. So by the looks of things here, 
I'm just going to move my Y1 cursor up to the top of that peak of that initial start on the starter. And you can see that we're at 252 millivolts, which really as a conversion, if one millivolt is one amp, that's 252 amps is how much that starter needs to draw right to get that motor to start turning right off the get-go. And then you can see right away the current begins to drop as the motor speed begins to pick up and there's less of a resistance as the motor's already spinning. Um, I'm able to actually zoom in with the oscilloscope and take a look at the pattern here. Um, obviously it sounds terrible and somewhat consistent here, but uh, it's not very nice. I'll start it a few times just to see if uh, we can get it to uh, do some funny stuff. You can see the amperage is starting to jump up, or it's climbing as the, as the starter motor is slowing down. It's really fighting, so it starts to draw more and more. And you can see there, it didn't even draw anything when uh, the starter just clicks. That's just the solenoid clicking. Like that. But the starter motor does not actually spin, so it does not draw any current whatsoever. Just like that. So that's kind of interesting. Thought you'd like to see that. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my test light. Show you how you would maybe diagnose this on the vehicle itself. So let's just say that the starter was uh, clicking. You go out to your vehicle clicking and you want to check to see if there's maybe maybe a an issue um, the first thing I would do is grab a test light and I would be checking the signal wire so when you turn the key the computer sends a signal message just a voltage um, to this uh, signal terminal to energize that solenoid, which is basically a switch. Um, I guess uh, I'm just trying to find out where I can hook this on. I need to hook this on somewhere. There we go, okay. So, um, you basically, you'd wanna go right to the uh, signal terminal and then turn the key on and crank the vehicle. And if the test light lights up, you know that your signal to the starter is good. If it did not light up, you know you have no signal going to the starter telling it to turn on, um, which would not be good. So you'd have to uh, figure out why, whether there's a, an issue in that signal wire or in something in that circuit, or maybe there's something that's preventing the signal wire from sending a current to the solenoid. Um, perhaps it's a standard vehicle and it has a safety switch in the clutch and that, that switch is bad or some, or you're not uh, putting your foot on the clutch, that would uh, prohibit that signal wire from uh, sending any current to that solenoid. Um, the other thing that you could check if this did light up and everything was normal 
is your main power. Sometimes they'll uh, have a bunch of corrosion or uh, sometimes possibly fuses can get blown if uh, somebody goes to jump a vehicle backwards, stuff like that. Um, another thing is uh, checking the ground. So you would want to turn the key on, have your test light on ground, on the battery, and then use your test light itself, sorry, on the starter body or on the engine block and go to crank the vehicle. And if you had a bad ground from the engine to the chassis, which would prevent your starter from starting, your test light would light. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of limited with hands of what I can do here to show you that, but uh, yeah, I thought that would be uh, sort of neat for you to check out and uh, sort of an interesting starter case where this one's not completely dead. Uh, as far as what exactly is wrong in the starter, I'm not exactly sure if maybe the contacts are bad. That's my guess. I know there's uh, brush rebuild kits that you can buy. Uh, my friend was showing me they're fairly cheap, something like $15 plus shipping. So not too bad. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.